All right, I think we're ready to move on. In the last section, we installed the operating system, we configured the OS, and we downloaded some software that's going to enable us to scan images and build a time-lapse video out of them. Uh, for this section, you're going to need a scanner, a powered USB hub, and the cables to connect all of those objects. So if you haven't already, go ahead and connect the hub, connect the scanner to that. Go ahead and boot up your Raspberry Pi if you haven't already, and we'll get logged in. So I'm going to continue using SSH to log in. You don't need to use that if you've got uh, an HDMI monitor and keyboard and mouse already plugged in. Go ahead and just log in. Otherwise, use SSH or PuTTY or some of the utility to get logged in. So we're connected. We need one more script that's going to make it easier for the scanning software to then communicate with the image editing software to then talk with some video processing software so that ideally we can be more hands-off. I'm going to use some software called git to do that. So if I type git, actually before that, you should make sure you're in your home directory. So type cd space tilde, and then type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash soilcam slash soilcam dot git and hit enter. So git is some version control software. We're just using it right now to download uh, the soilcam script. So if I type ls, the listing of files in this directory, we can see there's a soilcam directory now. If I go in there, see there's two files, readme.md and then the actual script soilcam.sh. If I use the program cat, I can type cat readme.md and that'll just display the text or the contents of that file into the current terminal. Nothing too important in here, doesn't hurt to read it. If I want to actually initiate a scan now, I think we're, I think we're good to do that. Make sure your scanner is connected. And once you've got that, all good to go. I'm going to type dot slash soilcam.sh and if I just hit enter right here, it'll give me some basic usage information for the script. Uh, dash S, dash P, V, T, and U, I'll let you read through that. So I'm going to go ahead and type dot slash soilcam.sh dash S and it's going to ask, you should create some directories so I can put some images in there. I'm going to say, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. It says you haven't created the directory public underscore HTML yet. So this is another chance for you to learn a little bit. Type mkdir tilde forward slash public underscore HTML. Now that that directory has been created, let's go ahead and try and run this soil cam script again. Again, it says there's no directory. Do you want me to create it? Yes. It's going to ask you that about five or six times. Last one, video directory. Let's create that. If you don't create those, the program's just going to exit. Now it's initiating a scan. So it's starting a scan. I'm currently using a Canon Lide 20. This is a really old scanner. That's kind of nice. One, there's not a whole lot of modern day operating systems that can use this scanner anymore. They haven't bothered to make drivers for it. So unless you have something like the Linux operating system or uh, the Mac OS and software like SaneScan, these scanners are almost unusable to most people. So it's a nice way to use a piece of software or to use a piece of hardware that's otherwise almost unusable. Uh, downsides are it runs really slow. It's using USB 1.0, so transfers data really slowly. But you can also find them for $10, $20 on eBay, Craigslist, Amazon, etc. This software, as it's currently set up, the script, I should say, uh, should work with uh, Canon Lide 20. I think we've also tested it with a Canon Lide 110, a Canon Lide 200. So a bunch of Canon Lide edition scanners that I'll work with. Um, the same software that the SoilCam script is communicating with is capable of using hundreds if not thousands of uh, scanners out there. So while this script might not directly work with your scanner, you should be able to modify one or two lines within the script to make it work. If you're curious about that, add some comments and I'll see if I can help you out. So it looked like it finished the scan. It's checking a temp directory to see if there's any existing files, doesn't find any, did find one image that hasn't been processed, so it's going to go ahead and resize and timestamp that. It will leave an original copy of the image, or at least in JPEG form, in the originals directory. Um, but that succeeded. If we actually want to check to see if 
this file is there, we can do a couple things. We can type ls tilde slash public HTML images, and we can either check the originals directory, and there's a file there. What other directory can we check? The processing directory. So the original directory gives us the original unmodified JPEG. Uh, that's a bit of a lie because the scanner originally scans in something called a uh, PNM or a TIFF file format. So we're already modifying it once, but the full resolution image goes into the original directory. A reduced file size image goes into the temp directory and that also contains the timestamp. So the other way to view this is via the web. If I type in the address of my pi and go to forward slash pi, we now have an images directory and a videos directory. If I click on images, and I go to original, we can see that original image time stamped and dated. Looks like that came out alright. One thing you'll notice with these cheaper scanners is they really can't scan anything more than about a millimeter or two away from them. So really only stuff that is right up against the, the glass platter platen will allow you to will be viewable. Now the original image doesn't have a timestamp on it. So you've got the file name but it doesn't really help you out if you can't see the file name. If we go to processing, there's this temp file here. This file will eventually be deleted, but if we look at the bottom, you can see a timestamp right there, and that should match the uh, timestamp of the, the file name and the original. So this is great. We've got an image scanned. Um, let's go ahead, and if you did have something on your scanner, um, go ahead and shift it a little bit, otherwise go ahead and put something on your scanner and let's run one or two more scans. You'll notice this time it doesn't ask you about those directories, it knows they've been created. Uh, it still checks it each time, but if it finds them it doesn't ask you to, to create them. So that just finished the scan. It found a previous file in the temp directory and it found a new image to process. So it's going to go ahead and convert the newly processed image into a slightly lower resolution image as well as timestamp it. Again, if we check the public HTML images original directory, we see two files in there. And if we check the processing directory, we see two temp files in there. So we can look at that in a web browser, and pull up both of those, slight shift in each image, if I wanted to see a video of what this might look like, I can type dot slash soilcam.sh space dash t. Well, there's two ways to uh, process a video here. One is with the dash t command, one of them is with dash v. The dash t command is not going to delete the files in the temp directory, whereas the dash v command will. So this says you can view it in this directory over your terminal or via web. The, uh, this directory. So I'll copy that. And we've got a file here, t underscore sc underscore 2016-0422. And if we play this video, you can see, cool, we've got a very brief two-frame animation. This is all well and good, uh, but you, the whole point of this is to have a script that you can just run uh, in the background and it can continue scanning day and night, night and day for days, weeks, months on end. We can automate that pretty easily using a uh, program called cron. If I type crontab c-r-o-n-t-a-b-l that'll list the current cron uh, scheduled processes. If I type crontab-e First, it's going to ask me which editor do you want to use to do some text editing. Uh, if you've never used uh, Vim or Ed, go ahead and just use 2. It's going to be Nano. It's a very easy to use uh, text editor. Uh, all these pound symbols are just comments. The computer ignores everything following that pound symbol. If I want to initiate a scan that's going to happen every 15 minutes, I can type asterisk slash 15 space asterisk 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 slash home slash pi slash soil cam slash soil cam dot sh dash dash s so 
That first asterisk is in reference to minutes, this one hours, day of the month, month, and then day of the week. So I want my scanner to initiate a scan every 15 minutes. So if I do star forward slash 15, every 15 minutes, every day, night or day, it's going to initiate a scan. Uh, if I want to process videos, say five minutes past midnight, I will say five space zero space asterisk 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 slash home slash pi slash soil cam slash soil cam dot sh space dash v. And before when we processed a video we used the dash t command. The dash v command, the only difference is it's going to delete all of the temp files after it runs. So it's up to you. Um, recommend using the dash v command. I think if you use the dash t command uh, you'll continually be processing old temp files uh, and your video will grow giant and you'll be processing things unnecessarily. Uh, later on we might make this a little bit more clear but for now every 15 minutes the scanner is going to make a scan and five minutes after midnight every night it's going to compile all of those temp images into a single video file and then delete all the temp files. It'll still keep the originals, so you can still use those. To save, I'm going to hit Control X. Do you want to save? Yes. File name to write. Don't change this. Just hit Enter. And now if I type crontab-l, it shows me that there are two uh, commands it's going to run. And that's... 90% of getting your soil scanner running or soil cam running. Next step we're going to talk about sealing your scanner so that it's more or less waterproof and then two, burying your scanner. Uh, in a later video we'll talk a little bit more about ways that you can modify the script, customize it, as well as do daily uploads to YouTube. But if you're done and you don't have anything more to do with your scanner and you want to shut it down, sudo shutdown dash h now we're good to go.